I still have the workbench set. We're back in it. It's been a while. This is my test bench, running 3900X RTX 2080. It's what I use to test a lot of stuff, at least in this instance. Pretty good configuration if you want to game, high frame rates, you know, stream, that kind of thing. But ever since I've started talking about and the GPU priority issues and render lag with OBS and live streaming and working with NVIDIA and the OBS devs to find a solution, which for the most part, we found a solution that's running OBS as admin. I have a whole video about that. You can check that out linked below if you somehow missed it. Big announcement, put that out there a few months back now at this point. But ever since I started talking about it, I got inundated with people asking questions about using dual GPU for encoding and streaming and things like that. And for the most part, I've not wanted to make a video because I don't really want to give that any merit because it's a bad idea. The OBS devs don't recommend it. NVIDIA doesn't recommend it, even though that would just mean them selling more cards. I believe they're trying to maybe alleviate the problem, but they don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. It's generally a bad time, especially on consumer platforms that aren't HEDT, like Threadripper or X299 from Intel. But people just don't believe me or they argue with me. So I'm going to attempt here today to prove my hypothesis that... <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. It hurts your performance. It actually slows down some of the capture modes. It limits what actual capture options you have available to you and is generally just inadvisable. We're gonna jump in today. I'm Meeples Fox, your stream professor, and we're doing some myth busting today. The myth being that you can use two GPUs to improve your streaming performance versus a second PC or just lowering your game settings. Now, the first question I'm going to address, although I will try to you know, point this out with numbers as well, the first one that everyone throws out there is using a second GPU for encoding. That on its own is 100% pointless. It is completely pointless. You see, the GPU itself, the actual die on your graphics card, has dedicated silicon on it made specifically for video encoding and decoding. It's dedicated hardware built specifically for that purpose. It's an ASIC that is literally all it is built for. That's all it can do. And it does not interfere with your actual game performance. It has no penalty on the CUDA cores or the 3D accelerated part of your graphics card, unless you're using psycho visual tuning or look ahead, which does use CUDA a little bit, but the main actual encoding process just runs on its own hardware. That's why when I run my FFmpeg NVENC test, where I'm just doing quality analysis of the encoder and just encoding on its own without rendering a game or anything, you look at GPU usage in the task manager or GPU-Z or whatever tool, the actual 3D part, the CUDA part, the part that your games or your video editing programs would use is at 0% usage because it's not being used. Meanwhile, just encoding is using the NVENC part. And other than a little bit of bandwidth back and forth, and it's actually a lot of bandwidth as we'll talk about, but other than bandwidth, which your games are not really utilizing that heavily, it's not going to impact anything on a graphics card because that's what it's built for. It's there. You might as well use it. The second piece to that puzzle, though, is actually testing how it impacts your games if you're trying to just completely use OBS entirely on your graphics card. And you may be thinking, well, what's the difference? When you're live streaming with OBS or XSplit or any other program, there are two processes happening at once. I mean, there's a lot, but there's two using your graphics card that you need to think about. One is that, and this is the same thing with video rendering on your video editor as well. There is the rendering aspect, which is your scene compositing, stacking all of your layers, your webcam, your webcam frame, your gameplay, your alerts, all of that, stacking those together into one scene and building your video scene out of that. That is rendering, that is compositing, that is what is actually using your graphics card that does use what your game uses. That is the part that uses your game, just like a video editor would, just like playing back, you know, a game would. It's all, you know, using your actual game part of your graphics card. But then you have encoding, which is separate, which takes that video feed that was already built and compresses it into H.264 or HEVC, H.265, if you're recording locally. Those are two separate processes. So the encoding process is fine. The 3D rendering compositing part is what competes with your games. And this is the other thing that people want to try to offload onto your graphics card. Well, we have our 2080 in here and I want to test and see if on a consumer platform, if we can make it work with a second GPU. That's why I have this right here. This is the NVIDIA GF GeForce GTX 1650 Super. This is officially the cheapest card you can get from NVIDIA that has, although sometimes there's a 1660 that you can get that trades prices with this, but for what you should normally expect, 
This is the cheapest card you can get that has NVIDIA's Turing encoder. The base uh, 1650 does not have the same encoder as this. And if you're wondering what that means, I have a few videos from back in last February where I talked about NVIDIA's encoder upgrade that came on hardware with the RTX cards. And that extends from the 1650 Super all the way up to the 1660 Ti and 1660 Super. I believe those are the highest tier cards of the 16 series. And you know, 20 series and 16 series, excluding the original 50, use the new encoder. So this is the cheapest option. I finally, you know, I picked it up right, actually right when it came out and haven't been able to make a video about it. I wanna talk about it, but also that would be a good option to throw in your rig. You know, back in the day when we were doing gaming and you wanted a separate Phys X card, people thought that would help out a whole lot. Same idea, people are like, well, I don't wanna throw in a 1050 or a 1650 Super along with my main graphics card and use it to encode or process my video stream. So we're gonna test that. Now. I'm doing this on AM4, which on specifically X570, which has a little bit of an advantage over Intel that might not do us any favors because it has PCIe 4.0. And while it has the same lane assignment so that our two graphics cards will end up getting put into X8 mode for each graphics card, it does have more bandwidth. So we might not run into the same bottlenecks, at which point I will switch to Intel just to kind of back up what I'm trying to say. But first, we need to test the games first. We're going to test how the games run on their own, how they run with just OBS open, with OBS encoding with NVENC, with OBS encoding with X264, and then add in the second GPU, rinse and repeat. The problem is, this is a lowly 1080p monitor, and 1080p60 is not enough to really stress your live stream, especially on a 2080. So we need another monitor. I think 1440p 144 hertz will do it. This is the BenQ EX2780Q. Reviewed this a little while back. Great 1440p 144 hertz monitor, low input latency, great HDRI modes. We're gonna hook everything up, do some test recordings, swap GPUs, do some more test recordings, and see how this goes. All right, so it's been a few hours now, and I have all the benchmarks for the three games, Apex, Modern Warfare, and uh, PUBG both with OBS running, without OBS running, capturing X264 and NVENC. And something interesting to note is that with this powerful combination and running OBS as admin, because it really is a fix, by running OBS as admin, we don't actually have any encoding or rendering lag in any of the games that I benchmarked because that fix kind of prevents it. So what we're really looking at, I was writing down the numbers just in case, and I'll still write that them down for the dual GPU because that may change. But what we're really looking at is the impact on your game's frame rate, because that's the only perceivable benefit, as I explained, you can have. So next up, we're installing the uh, 1650 Super here. This is from our friends over at Zotac. That made it sound like they sent it out. I picked it up on Amazon. Thanks to the wonderful patrons and float plane supporters. This is a super tiny. This actually has a dual fan card and only has a single six pin power connector. It is not bus powered, unfortunately. Super small form factor. Not gonna be amazing for like high frame rate games unless you're only playing esports titles on low, but for your scene rendering and compositing and encoding for OBS or XSplit or what have you, it's gonna do a great job, which makes it great for dual PC setups, probably not dual GPU setups. And no, by the way, just cause people keep asking, you do not need SLI or the same cards to use dual GPU purely for this kind of setup. That would make things, that's a completely different setup and would make things even worse. This is purely just slotting it in and then we're gonna have to run this test two more times cause I wanna run it just with the second GPU in just for kicks and then actually having OBS. I have some secret workarounds that I'm not actually revealing to make OBS run on the second GPU, but let's get it installed. Okay, so quick update. I have actually moved OBS. I've done all my benchmarking with just the two GPUs in together. I've now moved OBS to only run on the second GPU, the 1650 Super. Display capture now only sees the monitor attached to the GPU that it's running on, which is the 1650 Super. I have the second monitor now plugged into it. It only sees this for display capture. So display capture is no longer a viable source because it's seeing the wrong monitor. Come over here to game capture and it no longer sees the game either. Now, in order to fix that, I can go to right click properties and I can force SLI crossfire capture mode, I believe is the correct one. Yep, there we go. And now it's working, but this is going to inherently be a slower way to go. And immediately I saw some frame rate dips that had me a little concerned. Now you can see in the, in the GPU 3D graph that it is running on the 1650 Super. Now that is to run the entirety of OBS on it as well as in code. However, there is an option to just run the GPU encoder NVENC on the secondary GPU, and that's just in the normal NVENC setting for old NVENC. If you do that in the new NVENC option, it will silently fall back to the old NVENC 
uh, which is how the creator of OBS and the implementer of the plugin has explained it to me. It won't give you any warning. It'll just silently use the, old, oh, the older version. If you are unsure of what that is, I have a whole video about the new implementation versus the old implementation. That's not specifically rated, related to the new hardware. It's just simply a new faster way to keep all of the encoding process within the graphics card. And the old implementation had to route it through system memory to your CPU, back to system memory, back to your graphics card, which was wasteful. The new implementation keeps it all in your graphics card. Well, in order to share that encoding process with the second GPU, it now has to loop it back through processor, RAM, and then back down to GPU. Number two, using up more PCIe bandwidth, using up more processor power, adding more latency, which can cause more missed frames, using up more memory speed and bandwidth. You get the idea. So we're gonna see how this all fares out. And again, this is really not the ideal test system since it is a little too overpowered for this test. All right, real quick running through the data. I don't want to waste too much time on this because I really think it speaks for itself. I only did Apex Legends on the AMD system because it doesn't have a replay or theater mode system. I could not get consistent results like every match, you know, would have different frame rates. But you look through here for how the graph is laid out. I have usually about six different sections. OBS 1 GPU, which means I only have one GPU in and that's with OBS open. OBS 2 GPU, I have both GPUs in. OBS is open and then single GPU OBS encoding on X264 and NVENC. And this is with psycho visual tuning off because having it on did impact the frame rate more. And then OBS with both GPUs in encoding only on the second GPU, but still running on the first GPU. And then OBS both running on and encoding on the second GPU. And you can see a linear drop in performance for the most part. Overall, other than some inconsistencies with, again, Apex specifically here, you can see a pretty consistent drop in performance just by putting the second graphics card in and then encoding on the second graphics card and encoding on rendering on the second graphics card. For the most part, it's always a decrease in performance and at best, there's just no benefit. Cutting over to PUBG real quick here, uh, I also documented without OBS running at all, so you can see without even OBS being open, just putting in the second GPU, we lose about 11 frames per second, which is pretty crazy. And the same, we lose about eight frames per second going from OBS open on one GPU to OBS open on two GPUs. And then encoding, we end up losing a couple frames and then OBS running and encoding on the second GPU, we lose like 50 frames, which is pretty crazy. Over on Intel, uh, we see fairly similar results as well. I also included here whether OBS was you know just having obs open was on the first gpu or the second gpu and just having obs open we lost nearly it was, it was like 25 frames going between having obs open on the first gpu in a dual gpu setup and having obs open on the second gpu pretty crazy real quick hitting black ops 4 here similar results big drop offs just by having the second gpu in and then once you start you know running performance there you, I did see a tiny bit of an improvement, weirdly enough, by using Invink on the uh, first GPU in a single GPU setup versus on a dual GPU setup. But I think this was just a hiccup for the most part. I tried running the test a few times, um, but again, there's a little bit of inconsistencies. But I also think this is one game that completely maxes out your graphics card and using the old Invink impl implementation can kind of perform a little better. Uh, it depends entirely on your circumstance, though. But between AMD and Intel, the numbers are pretty straightforward. It, it is really hard to argue with this and tell me that you're getting any sort of benefit out of using a dual GPU setup whatsoever. Because again, at best, you're, no, you're not seeing any benefit. And at worst, you're seeing a significant drop in performance. Owned is the best place to really kick up your visual branding for your live stream to 11. You want better alerts? You want a cool layout so that your webcam frame isn't just hanging out floating in, you know, lonely land and has your name by it. You really want your stream to stand out from the next guys or the next guys or the next girls. You want to customize something so that it doesn't look the same as everyone else's. Owned is the place to go. They have a live viewer for all of your, 
you know stream layouts and things like that so you can actually see in real time how it will look before you commit to downloading it or buying it without you know a misleading youtube video or thing like things like that they even have social media banners and website templates and all sorts of stuff head over to eposvox.gg slash own3d to learn more they always have prom promos going on so save yourself a bit of coin toss it to your witcher and check them out okay well this project turned into a frustration and a half especially since I knew that it was mostly a waste of time just to quantitatively prove what I've been saying for a year now. But I strongly feel I have done so at this point with the numbers that I have seen. I still have to, at the time that I'm recording, go run the same benchmarks over on an Intel rig because I think that will further prove my point and have even worse results. But with the numbers I have from the AMD side, I feel confident enough in stating that, yes, the results finally do, you know, actually show that using dual GPU for encoding or for running OBS either provides no benefit at best and at worst actually hurts things a lot. And especially with something like Black Ops 4, it actually hurts your game. Just having the second GPU in your system alone on any of the games I tested, even if you don't have OBS open, just having that second GPU automatically lowers your in-game frame rates, which is pretty crazy. That's the whole issue I was talking about. Your GPU running in X8, it really does have an impact here. It's not a good idea. I don't recommend it. OBS doesn't recommend it. NVIDIA doesn't recommend it. Along with that, I ran into some other frustrations. You may have realized that I just replaced Modern Warfare with Black Ops 4, and that's because DirectX 12 games cannot be have their textures shared across graphics cards. So since display capture doesn't work, game capture doesn't work without the SLI compatibility hook, which also doesn't work for DirectX 12 games, and window capture doesn't work on actual game windows, there was no way for me to actually stream Modern Warfare over one GPU to the other. Always a black screen. DirectX 12 games does not do not work. So I had to downgrade that to Black Ops 4, which runs in DX11, and I could do that. But even still, with Apex, PUBG, and Black Ops 4, at no point would you see an actual tangible worth downgrading the rest of your performance, adding in a second graphics card, having that much more extra noise, heat, and power draw to improve your stream whatsoever. I think the people who keep saying that this does something for them are either placebo or addressing, unintentionally addressing another problem in their system. And in fact, I've had many people who did advocate for that for a long time come back to me and say, okay, well, when I pulled out the second graphics card, everything ran better because they put it in without really, you know, benchmarking a before and after and just thought, oh, hey, this works, it's fine. And then they pull it back out and they're like, wow, it runs way better now. Exactly. Now, of course, this will apply differently on an HEDT system where you have quad channel memory that runs through faster, you have faster processors, and you have the enough PCIe lanes for both graphics cards to run at full speed. But at that point, you also have, again, all of the extra horsepower for this not to be necessary. Because also, something I wanted to note, I was originally benchmarking how many dropped and skipped frames for encoding lag and render lag OBS was reporting during all this process, because, you know, that would be reasonable data to include. Except since I was running OBS as admin and getting the GPU priority fix, there's literally no dropped frames, at least on the single GPU system. None. So there's nothing to worry about. Over on the dual GPU system, there was like, in certain circumstances, I either consistently had one dropped frame from render lag or six drops frame, dropped frames from render lag, depending on the game. Which isn't significant to like a long-term recording or stream, but is, it was consistent enough that, yeah, it's objectively a worse experience. Not a significant amount and for that specific number, whereas the actual frame rate impact was much more significant. But again, between having modern, fast hardware, the fact that your PCIe lanes and bandwidth does not work in that regard, that, you know, the way textures and video feeds are shared between graphics cards just doesn't hold up for that, and you have to use the older uh, NVENC implementation, which really performs significantly worse, it's just a bad time all around. So, my firm final answer, it stops suggesting dual GPU for encoding or for streaming in general. No, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't benefit. No, it's not a good idea. Yes, it will cause you nothing but problems. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides like this, where I dive into issues that no one actually cares about the technical answer for, but they keep suggesting is possible anyway. I'll see you next time.